Hey, I'm Whitney Brock and welcome back to my studio. This is part three of the Red Apple Project. So if you missed part one and two, the photo shoot and the blocking in stage, I suggest you get back there and get caught up because we're moving right along to the modeling stage. I'm going to be going over my palette and my brushes, which I call my weapons of choice, and really just some nitty gritty detail. So let's just go ahead and get started. Working right over the blocking in our roadmap, I'm laying in a lot of paint and it's all about value still. My palette is titanium white, raw umber, ultramarine blue, cronacridone, magenta, yellow ochre, and then with the last three I mentioned, I make a beautiful warm soft violet which I use throughout the painting. So really temperature shifts are just as important as value shifts. So you see I'm laying in the lights, the mediums, the darks, all where they belong, and then I start modeling and working them. With these brushes, I got the mop brush, the two flats, the 10 and the six, which are the red sable, and then the three eighths dagger, quarter inch dagger, hog hairs, and then the quarter inch synthetic dagger. Those dagger brushes are awesome. You can see the angle that provides a nice broad brush stroke and um, laying in a lot of color. And then you've got the fine little tip there that can really work some, some details, little marks. The flats I use for softening the edges and sometimes applying paint as well. They just don't do, they just don't do it for me as well. The mop brush is just for blending. So I'm jumping around, I'm loading one brush maybe with a dark value and then the other brush with lighter values. So that's why you see me hopping around so much. Once I got a light value on there, I'm just gonna go and check out where else needs the light value that happens to be on my brush. Now you see I've got the dark, so I kinda hop around all the little dark areas. It saves a lot of cleaning and rinsing and wiping of the brush. So if I have whatever's on my brush, I look around to see whatever else needs that same value. It keeps harmony too as you're cruising along. And the darkest value, I'm using just the raw umber and the ultramarine blue. And then the lightest, of course, is just the white and usually toned with a little bit of violet or a little bit of ultramarine blue. You're going to see me paint this shaft here in a second, right there. You see my strokes are going around the contour of the cylinder shape. Just always makes a nice, more beautiful, natural contour to a, to a cylinder there. I did it again. Oh, see, there you go. Um, it's it's better than just going a strip all the way up that shaft or that fold with one brush stroke. It just it just doesn't read as natural and as soft. That's what I think anyway. So as I'm moving along here, I'm really you know there's a lot of detail, but there there's some areas that I'm going to have to go back to. I know it as I'm leaving the area. I'll be back, but if I don't continue on in a nice rhythmic continual process I feel that the painting doesn't have harmony overall you should see me just use the mop brush there <laughs> had to be quick to catch that for just some really soft blending you don't want to over blend you want to still see brush strokes it is a painting for heaven's sakes so I'm getting into the last little areas and all around the painting of the apple, but the apple's not been painted yet. That'll be the last episode, is the apple and the titling. So, there you go. Whew, I'm tired. Oh yeah, one more. And the glow there around the apple from the photograph, I actually exaggerated that little glow right there. There you go. Until the last episode, I hope you enjoyed. Please hit like and subscribe. Thanks folks.